Hi, and welcome back to the Stefan Levera podcast focused on Bitcoin and Austrian economics. Today, we are carrying on with the BTC Pay Server series with Cooks, a contributor of BTC Pay Server. But first, let me introduce the sponsors of the podcast. So firstly, check out Kraken. They are the best Bitcoin exchange. I've been consistently impressed with the way they operate over the years. They also have this incredible strong focus on security. They are operating Kraken Security Labs. They are working on various initiatives in the space. They're one of the longest standing Bitcoin exchanges. They're consistently rated the best. They offer some of the best liquidity in the industry. They've got high trading volume and low fees. Kraken have 24-7 support. And on the institutional business solution side, they're very popular there too. They offer the highest available API rate limits. And there's also a Kraken OTC desk. Kraken offer five fiat currencies and also offer margin and futures trading. So to learn more and sign up, go to the Kraken link in the show notes. Next up, look into Unchained Capital. They're a Bitcoin financial services company. I really like working with these guys. They offer a two of three keys multi-signature vault product, and that helps protect you against that proverbial $5 wrench attack, and you can distribute your keys, and Unchained Capital will be the third-party co-signer. Customers who create this Unchained Vault also get three free months of access to Safety and Amuse's Bitcoin Standard Research Bulletin. Unchained also offer Bitcoin collateralized loans, allowing you to get USD liquidity without selling your Bitcoins. So this might be more tax efficient for you, enabling you to avoid selling. So while that loan's outstanding, it's stored in collaborative custody with Unchained. So to learn more and sign up, go to the Unchained Capital link in the show notes. So the interview today is with Cooks. He's a BTC Pay Server developer and contributor, and I really enjoyed this chat because we really dove a little deeper into BTC Pay Server, and we spoke a little bit about the architecture of it, and also this new and upcoming concept of the fiat transmuter, which helps merchants take Bitcoin payment, but then actually receive fiat through an interface with a Bitcoin exchange. So I hope you guys enjoy this interview. Here it is. Cooks. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. You're a well-known uh, team member on the BTC Pay Server project. Let's hear a little bit about your background. How did you get into Bitcoin and also development? Yeah, so I started kind of coding when I was like a teenager. Um, I used to play this game called RuneScape quite a bit. I don't know. If, yeah, <laughs> Classic. I played it so much that I eventually started looking to, you know, figure out how to be more efficient at it and eventually i started coding these bots for it so i didn't have to play myself and that pretty much kept me going full time instead of uh, actually playing the game so yeah it just took off from there um i started coding maybe at like the age of 13 on that game and by the time i was 17 i just said uh, i'll just i'll just uh, keep on working on this full time one you know as in doing coding as a career um yeah that's how it all started um eventually i i've worked at all sorts of different companies um, doing mostly money related things so forex uh, investments uh, insurance stuff um so um i gaming so yeah excellent and then l- let's get into the bitcoin part of it how did you find bitcoin yeah bitcoin um so it's actually been a long time since i've heard of bitcoin and i bought my first stuff but um i didn't really get into into it that much back then i think it's been around uh, since the mount gox era but i didn't really get into it at all that much at that point uh it was very you know let's say rough at that age for me um i think i joined the, the dogecoin community for a while but that was just for laughs um i didn't really understand the tech it was just fun stuff on reddit posting memes and jokes and you know sending tips to each other laughs you know, yeah for laughs so what was it about bitcoin that appealed to you was there anything in particular yeah eventually you know once you actually start getting into the tech so maybe two three years ago i started reading more about the tech behind it and you know actually learning how to code in it and code with it and programming stuff around it and you know it, it starts appealing a lot more to me. It starts appealing a lot more to developers, at least if you actually understand the tech behind it. Um, to me, it really hit the core when I actually started writing programs in it. And that's how you actually, uh, how I really got into Bitcoin and fell down the rabbit hole. Nice, nice. Well, okay, let's bring it to BTC Pay Server then. Did you, how did you hear about BTC Pay Server? Yeah, so 
few years ago, I was trying to start my own projects, uh, maybe a company, but uh, um, I was looking to do a crypto exchange <laughs> like most people in the beginning want to do. Um, and I found uh, I, I'm a C Sharp developer, .NET developer. So obviously I ended up in uh, Nicola Dorier's uh, libraries uh, and Bitcoin and st- around the, and his other projects there. Um, and eventually I started coding my own like payment processor to accept uh, Bitcoin payments, deposits and moving money around through that. And eventually I ended up um, on BTC Pay because it did exactly what I needed to do. Um, really it really fed into all the stuff i needed to work on and with some initially i just started sending some small changes to the to the to the project um but and it was it went pretty well i think it, it was easy for me to get into um pretty much exactly what i needed to do and it hit me right at the core um down the line i ended up spending so much time on btc pay just coding unrelated stuff to my own projects that I just completely forgot about my own project and just started working on BTC Pay, and I really just ended up just staying there, and dedicated to it. Like about wh- where in the timeline was this in terms of BTC Pay service starting? I would say it was early last year that I actually got into BTC Pay quite a bit. So yeah, around. So I think BTC Pay started like mid year before that, sort of August ish, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so prior to that, had you met any of the other BTC Pay server team or spoken with them? Or is it, it was just purely you saw it as doing something you wanted? Yeah, exactly. It was just something I wanted to do. Um, I never met any of the others at all. I don't think I've... No, I've never even met them in real life at all. Not, so <laughs> I'm not... I only joined... Well, I started hanging out on Twitter just because of the guys told me to on, the, on BTC Pay. So... Um, I was very disconnected from crypto Twitter in general, Bitcoin Twitter. So <laughs> it was all very new to me. Yeah. And at that point, were you still working in your normal job or had you already quit? Yeah, I was still working in my normal job. Uh, I actually quit officially in February this year. So so I was actually doing it full time on the side <laughs> to work on BTC Pay at that point. Yeah. And how's that experience been, quitting your, your normal day job to uh, work properly into Bitcoin projects? Pretty great. I mean, I've learned way more in the past uh, few months that I've been working on it on BTC Pay than I have in, you know, the full th- in my full-time job for the past few years now. So it's been amazing for me. Um, the community has been amazing. Um, um, you know, the biggest issue is having money to actually <laughs> live off, but... Um, I ma- I had some savings going, so I've I've managed to kind of get myself lean to to survive for a few more months. So so far, I'm still going strong for now on BTC Pay full time. So okay, great. Let's dive into BTC Pay Server itself. Uh, I'm interested to discuss the architecture of BTC Pay Server. Can you give us an overview? Yeah, so BTC Pay Server um, comes in like three or four parts um you've got uh, the core btc pay server itself which has the ui the checkout the store management aspect of it invoices um the apps which are crowdfunding and uh, and point of sale then you've got the then you've got nb explorer which is a a, a bitcoin exp- uh, a bitcoin tra- utxo tracker so that uh, you, like a block explorer. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, it helps you kind of figure out what's what money is actually coming to your uh, to your addresses, and uh, it also helps you generate new addresses, helps you create transactions to spend with uh, with also. Um, yeah, and then there's also the Docker repository, which is basically our installer, which helps us you know, strap the entire thing on different VPS VPSs, servers, Raspberry Pis. And it works everywhere, globally and universally. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, those are the main parts of it. Because otherwise, there is also the um, the smaller libraries. Well, smaller, let's say, uh, like in Bitcoin and uh, the BTC Pay dot Lightning integration libraries. Um, those are uh, those are used extensively in everything in in the entire stack. So yeah, yeah. And uh, as I understand, 
it's not that there's different BTC pay servers for different devices. It's just the one BTC pay server, right? No, no, it's exactly the same one um, used everywhere. So you, we code once and deploy it everywhere. Great. And so there are a couple other pieces I was keen to dig into there as well. So I understand you've got uh, the the potential to use Tor as part of BTC pay server. You've got um, Let's Encrypt and Nginx. Um, and then yeah. you've also got like a database as well uh, as kind of the pieces that kind of uh, form yeah. the overarching so, puzzle. Yeah, so for a database, you could use a Postgres. Uh, I, that's the official one that we deploy all installations with by default, but there, there is an option to use MySQL and some other different types of databases. Um, Let's Encrypt helps you get HTTPS uh, certificates, certificates for your websites so so that your websites are secure. And um, what was the other one? Oh, um, I think just mentioning Tor as well, that you can set it up with Tor. Uh, yeah. yeah, so so Tor is actually included by default now, so you don't even need to do anything. So it's deployed automatically. If you want, you can opt out, but it doesn't really bring any value to opt out of it. Fantastic. So let's now talk a little bit about the typical ways that a merchant might use BTC pay server and how you've got ideas around making it more flexible and how, how does BTC pay server help with that? Yeah. So BTC pay is at this point, it's not just a payment processor because you can do so much crazy things with it at this point. Um, you can, you can pretty much deploy it and use it for, you know, um, not just not just to accept payments, but you can also use it to you know manage a whole um, system for exchanges. If like I wanted to do, for example, you can use it to to handle deposits and withdrawals and stuff like that. Um, some people wanted to use it for I forgot what they like um, uh, like integrating it into forums um, into their into their own specific apps and basically it's it's quite easy to just modify it to show it to be whatever you want it to be. Um, my plans to make BTC pay more flexible uh, are pretty much interlinked with working on the uh, new API that uh, Nicholas announced a few, probably a few days ago. Um, it's basically to allow people to not be constrained with what we show as a UI and allow them to expand to, to do it as a to use BTC Pay as a headless system, uh, what that means is they can roll out their own UI and create their own new, completely new uh, UX experience. Um, I mean, if you wanted to, you could use BTC Pay as a uh, uh, as a um, as a API to create your own payment solution to like as a competitor to BitPay and all the other and CoinGate and all those guys. So, yeah, it's quite it's quite easy to do this once we have the new API rolled out. Yeah. And uh, I recall just from the offline chat, we were talking, you were mentioning the, uh, like a OAuth or open ID sort of feature. So what's the interaction there? Yeah. So open ID is a way to allow users to authenticate, to log in to BTC pay through an API. Um, uh, like sometimes you, when when you look at some apps that they tell you that you can log in with Twitter and uh, log in with Facebook and all that stuff, um, and then you click on the link and it takes you to the to the Twitter or Facebook page and it tells you uh, authorize this application to use. Um, this is basically allowing you to do the same thing with uh, with BTC Pay with your own BTC Pay instance. So. Eventually, you'll have users being able to integrate BTC Pay into their apps or create a whole new service around uh, that adds functionality to BTC Pay. Um, and it lets users to, uh, to just log in with your instance directly. So you can create a whole new um, API or service that, uh, let's, say, let's say, it uh, adds a new application to BTC Pay. So right now we have crowdfunding and uh, point of sale. Let's say you create a more advanced point of sale app that uh, hooks up to BTC Pay server. You'll you can let users to just uh, log in with their BTC Pay inst uh, BTC Pay account and uh, they can use your new app through it. Um, and the possibilities for this kind of stuff can be quite endless. Um, it's hard for me to imagine because I've been working with the same apps so so often, but it's quite big. 
Yeah, sure. And so then if I've understood you, just to make sure I've got this right, does that mean then that you could, similar to when you go on a website and you try to log in using your Google ID or Twitter, it's a similar sort of thing here, but with BTC Pay Server? Yeah, with your own BTC Pay Server. And obviously, it's not just that much. That's only one of the small features of OpenID. Um, but you can also log in transparently in the background. Um, so you can have your... So you can have machines communicate with BTC Pay. It doesn't need to be a user to uh, to actually actively log in. It could just be just a normal API. Okay. Uh, let's also talk about the Fiat Bridge or what is also known as the BTC Transmuter. So actually, sorry, before we get into that, let's take a step back. The key reason why many merchants look for some kind of payment processing in the first place is because right now they're costs are typically denominated in fiat, meaning they could accept Bitcoin, but then they would still need to get fiat because they've still got to pay rent and labor wages and so on. And so that historically is why they've used services like Coinbase in the past and BitPay in the past and or BitPay even today uh, and some of these other services. Uh, and it helps them quickly translate that Bitcoin into fiat for them to use. Uh, but as I understand, BTC Pay Server, you've got, you guys have got something you're working on that will do a similar kind of function. Yeah, so with BTC Pay, the main thing is that, the, one of the main features is that the, the funds can go directly to your cold storage wallet if you, if you configure it that way. That means all the money is never really touched by Anybody that uh, handles BTC, uh, loves BTC Pay, or even the server admin, if uh, if you're running it on a third-party BTC Pay host, um, and because of that, it makes handling fiat quite hard. Um, at least, um, at least converting it to fiat, since there, nobody has access to the money. There's no private keys available to actually send the money elsewhere. Um, nobody has custody of it. Um, so what we had to do is we had, we had to pretty much create a, a separate plugin system, a, a separate plugin that handles this stuff for you. Um, initially, we wanted to do it so that it would be you know, built into BTC Pay and have a small feature that um, that lets you send money to an exchange, send, send the Bitcoin to an exchange and just uh, trade it for, for fiat. But uh, we started hearing people telling us what the requirements were for them. And it was quite intense, like so many different things. Everybody wants to handle their own different exchange. They have their own criteria on how to do it. And eventually we just had to come to the conclusion that we needed to create this huge flexible system um, to handle this kind of uh, requirements. And that's where BTC, uh, where where the BTC transmuter was uh, born. Uh, me and Rockstar Dev were uh, trying to plan it Back, way back in November, no, yeah, around November last year. Um, and uh, we came up with this idea that we can create a, a system that allows you to define rules and conditions on uh, uh, on how to, to handle these exchange, these, uh, your criteria, specific, your entire criteria on how to do fiat settlement. Um, and what we found out when we started building the system is that you can do so many, so much more with it, since you can, uh, you can basically define all sorts of actions and rules. So you can do, you can do spending of uh, your Bitcoin. You can split your the the money that comes in between different users. Um, it's uh, it's quite a big thing. Um, I just, I feel like. Uh, I feel like BTC transmuter is not just a fiat bridge at this point. It's it's a way to automate your money. Uh, that's that's exa actually how Nicholas put it a few months ago. Um, you can do so many crazy things with it now. Um, for example, a lot of people were asking for us uh, were asking us to allow um, BTC Pay to send emails to to their users once uh, once their once their payment was confirmed. With uh, with transmuter, you just tell it so that once an invoice on your BTC Pay store gets confirmed. Send an email to this. Send an email to the to the buyer. T 
telling him how much money was uh, uh, confirmed at to a point. And then you can also make it so that it uh, it's it uh, and then you can also tell it so that it sends a command to an exchange that you configure to to place a sell order of your Bitcoin equivalent to the same amount that you received and to, against the fiat that you want to receive. So you can create quite a lot of uh, different criteria yeah. for that. So as I understand, the basic model is though that you are maintaining some sort of float at a given exchange and theoretically it would be a, bit, a Bitcoin float at the exchange. Uh, it, and so... While you know you as the merchant receives money incoming into your store, you would then, as those orders come in or as the bitcoins come in and hit your BTC pay server, uh, it's calling out to the exchange using I, I presume some API that the exchange then knows. Okay, sell you know however many five hundred thousand sats or whatever um, to get uh, the fiat equivalent into your exchange account. Is that? basically how it works or where am i yeah that, so that's the most common use case we've we came up with for how to use the btc transmuter to create a fiat settlement feature um obviously you can come up with some more crazy ways um like for example um you can also you can also send the bitcoin uh so all the money that comes in through your through your store can go to a hot wallet that you that is handled by BTC transmuter, which then forwards let's say fifty percent of that money to to the exchange that you're using and fifty percent of the uh, the rest to go to your cold storage. Um, and once the money is confirmed on your exchange, you can tell it to to sell that to fiat. Um, while you also keep the 50% uh, locally uh, in your lo uh, cold storage. Um, that's also another way to do it. Um, so you can it's quite customizable. You can create all sorts of different flows. Um, for example, some people accept uh, altcoins with, uh, with uh, BTC Pay. You can also t just say, tell the BTC transmitter to just grab those altcoins, send them to an exchange and dump them straight away to Bitcoin. So you don't even need to hold them or touch them at all right yeah okay and so i guess what you're getting at there is you can set up different ways so for example if you as a merchant want to make a decision i want to hold 10 percent of my incoming bitcoins as bitcoin and not fiat you can set the settings up in such a way that it will do that is that that right yeah exactly yeah Okay, yep. and then it's interesting then because I guess exchanges will like this idea because they will get new customers out of it. So in the past where a merchant might have used a BitPay or whoever, uh, if they are now using BTC Pay Server and the BTC Transmuter, then the exchange is getting more business out of that. So they're, they're happier about that, I guess. Hopefully, uh, I, th I think it makes sense for them to actually allow BTC Transmuter to work with them. Um, we do have, I think we do have like over a dozen exchanges integrated into the Transmuter. So people do have an option to do have a choice on what to what to use. Um, I think it should be, it should be good business for them. Uh, some exchanges in the past have actually had a similar feature where they had where they dedicate a specific Bitcoin address to to their customers, and once they send money to this address, they would automatically dump it for for fiat. Uh, I don't know if it's still a feature nowadays, but it used to be something in the past. Okay, great. And just with the you mentioned the twelve exchanges and the transmitter, I actually I haven't um I haven't had the chance to see it yet in BTC Pay Server. Is it like a typically available option right now or is it more like an advanced feature that you need to dig into to use um so it's quite advanced um the ui is still it's still it's still an alpha build kind of thing um but it is available as an option when you're installing btc pay on the side um it's a separate ui completely separate login and everything um just works on the side uh, so they are completely separate instances since btc transmuter does have some uh, handling of private keys, we wanted to keep them completely separate so we don't taint <laughs> BTC Pay with any private key storage. Um, the private key storage is mostly there for these hot wallet interactions that you set up if you want to, obviously. But yeah.
it's uh, it's just a it's just part of the installer. You just uh, run one extra command and you should be good to go. Great. Okay. Uh, let's talk about Lightning as well. So, do you want to just touch on any of the thoughts around how BTC Pay Server helps a merchant take Lightning payment and then any interaction with if there is any with uh, Fiat Bridge for that? Yeah. So the Fiat Bridge actually also um, handles Lightning, so it supports all the um, all the implementations that BTC Pay supports. Um, it it can detect, you know, uh, like incoming payments. It can forward payments as well through Lightning. Um, eventually, we I want to have a, one of the use cases to allow Lightning Lightning payments to be forwarded to other people who will uh, swap it for on-chain uh, payments. So similar to the Lightning Loop and uh, the other services that have been built around these kind of use cases so eventually i'm hoping that uh, btc transmuter will let you offer these services to your people to to your customers um without needing a specific uh, lightning implementation because lightning loop is cool but i i would really like it if everything was uh, agnostic of the implementation right i see so let's talk through just an example for the merchant who wants to use lightning so let's say uh I'm a merchant, I install BTC Pay Server, I install this additional uh, Fiat Bridge or BTC Transmuter, uh, I need to set up some lightning channels, and ideally I need some incoming capacity, so maybe I can you know, call out to the community and say, hey guys, I, I want some incoming capacity, and maybe if you know, I've got a few friends, they'll, they'll open some channels to me, then I've got incoming capacity. And so let's say I start selling stuff, and over time, the balance in that channel starts moving to my side and then those channels start to become exhausted, right? Because all the balance is on my side. What's what's some of the options then uh, in terms of, you know, submarine swaps, loop out or, you know, do you have any thoughts around what um, that way is of generating the ability for the merchant to keep that flow coming through? Well, with, in terms of BTC transmuter, um, you could, in theory, you could uh, have an agreement with another person that runs uh, Transmuter and BTC Pay to create a set of rules so that whenever he receives a payment from your node, from your Lightning node, he will send you uh, an on-chain uh, Bitcoin transaction to you. So you can create, you can emulate the loop in and loop out through BTC Transmuter as well. Um, uh, you can do all sorts of different flows, so that's that's the beauty of it. Whatever you can come up with, you can hook it up. And since it integrates directly with BTC Pay, you can accept Bitcoin payments straight with it as well. Great. All right. Are there any other ideas that you're interested to work with uh, on BTC Pay server in the future? Yes. Um, so one of the things with the BTC transmuter and uh, and BTC Pay server is that you have to like a lot of people want the fiat bridge, uh, fiat conversion, and uh, a big problem with exchanges is that nowadays their KYC has been getting kind of crazy. Like the other day, my favorite exchange, well, favorite, the one I prefer to use, got their got this enhanced KYC policy that basically asked me for everything about me and some more as well that I didn't even know what to fill in. Um, so. I wish we could eventually find a way to package up BTC Pay Server and BTC Transmuter to allow people to offer fiat and uh, Bitcoin through the through them. So I would imagine. So for example, somebody starts up a BTC Pay Server, they create a point of sale app, and they can offer um, sending fiat to them in exchange for Bitcoin sent to them. So that would be like a virtual ATM for Bitcoin. So, for example, somebody sends you Bitcoin and you send them back fiat in some way or another, uh, and vice versa, obviously. So that's one thing I, I really want to work on in the medium term, at least. Um, I also want to allow some form of uh, exchange support. So for, for as in running BTC Pay Server to... Um, to fulfill an exchange, uh, a crypto exchange kind of... Um... Like to be an exchange or what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since 
PTC Pay Server had uh, last year they had some work done on it to actually allow atomic swaps, so you can actually do that kind of stuff already. So if somebody wanted to emulate a whole new uh, Bitcoin exchange or you know or uh, any exchange that you know at this point, um, if you just say that you can create BTC Transmuter and BTC Pay Server to say okay every time I I receive a payment on this specific store. I will send them X amount of, I don't know, Litecoin or whatever the people want to buy, because it's quite possible already to do. Um, at least it gets people, you know, off the off the whole exchange idea that they need an exchange to actually do these trades. Um, it's I, I prefer like I prefer having these smaller peer to peer um, trades than having one big massive entity controlling all the all the money that goes uh, that 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 has the fiat on ramp right i see uh yeah so i, I suppose yeah that that we could see uh, a, a lot of smaller people offering their own little version of an exchange uh and i suppose in some sense the atm idea is kind of related to that as well but it's more just like a fiat exchange only uh, i'm curious actually just with the atm could you explain a little bit further on that so what would the setup be? Would it be somebody sets up a piece of hardware or some kind of computer and they're running, actually it's running BTC pay server and they would have, like where would the fiat part come into that? Yeah, so I was talking mostly mostly about virtual ones, so online, but um, I'm sure you can come up with a way. I've, I've seen BTC pay server used with vending machines and stuff like that as well. So you can hook up with, with some dispenser of course you need to add some security since there's cash in it and people are going to try to open it with open with a with a crowbar but um virtually i don't know how i'm still trying to figure out the right way to handle transfer of fiat because obviously that's that's quite a harder <laughs> quite a harder part to deal with yeah uh, so you, you could yeah in many cases the difficulty is on the fiat yeah. side so. so i mean you can always do it in a more manual way where they send you fiat by by mail if you wanted to but that's kind of risky in any way in in, in any case um so i was thinking maybe you you could also i don't know if you've heard of revolut um and other payment yeah oh, so maybe you could use their their api and have two accounts connect with each other and then they send money to each other like that it's obviously still trustful. You still need to have. You still have the. You still there's still trust in between these clients to to actually fulfill the order. But it, as long as they're small transactions, I don't think it's a big issue. And I also think that they would be bro- breaking some terms and conditions here and there to actually do these kind of trades. So if if I can manage to make this easy enough for people to to do. It, it shouldn't matter that they just launch an instance and they do a few ex- exchanges uh, between people and they get reported, closed down, and then they can just reopen one in you know an hour or two. So I'm hoping I can come up with an idea like that. Fascinating stuff. Also, do you have any advice for any new developers who are looking to contribute to BTC Pay? Yeah, um, just come to the chat and hang out with us. Um, <laughs> we'll pretty much tell you what we want to do and if you want to do anything specifically we'll we'll help you out anytime you want um we do while we do mostly c sharp coding there's all sorts of different languages that you can do um so we've got front end back end ux work uh, design uh, linux scripts uh, there's really anything uh, there's really a lot of stuff that you can just touch and uh, modify yourself and if you have no clue where to start just message us and we'll tell you what we wanted to work on in in the short term and we'll guide you through them great so let's have a are there any examples that you can think of where somebody came through and they were just sort of chatting and had their own maybe they're, they're running their own merchant store and then they ended up contributing yeah um well, I mean, if you look at Pavlin XC, <laughs> uh, he pretty much ended up like that, right? He had a, a Bitcoin shirt store and ended up hanging out in the chat so often and pretty much doing customer support and helping out with all the issues around that. He basically lives there at this point. Um, it's a great example of a person really getting committed out of just his own use case. Yeah, that's a common trend i see as well within the whole world of open source it's very much a scratch your own itch 
right? So it's something you have yeah. some certain problem that you want, and then that is what motivates you to go and work on that problem, and then collaborate with other yeah, people exactly. who want the same thing. Yeah, exactly, and that's pretty much how I got into it as well. I mean, I wanted to do my own. Uh, cliche thing uh, started working with the uh, with the libraries that uh, that were offered by BTC Pay and eventually I got sucked down the rabbit hole and now I just work on just these features um, and making sure the features are growing and getting better by the, every day. Yeah. Um, did you also have any involvement with the crowdfunding application? Yeah. Um, so uh, Nicholas actually sponsored me to work on the crowdfunding in December. Um, yeah, so I spent maybe a month or two work building the crowdfunding app, um, and I think it's been a great success so far. Uh, plenty of people have used it in all sorts of campaigns now. Yeah, um, I do. I yeah. Oh, I was just saying, let's dive into the crowdfunding app a little bit more. Tell us why how that works and that how that works a little differently from what some of us the typical BTC Pay server merchant experience. Yeah, so BTC Pay Server's uh, crowdfunding app uh, is really is a is a superset of features that BTC Pay offers. Um, so it uses the invoicing system that BTC Pay offers and uh, allows users to create uh, an application that groups all these invoices together and creates invoices for that for that application. So you, you can say that you can create a um, so let's say for uh, like I think the last example I saw the other day creates um, some new luxury shoes, and he needs to raise a specific amount of money for that. Um, you can create perks um, on a on a BTC Pay crowdfunding app, and say at a hundred if you donate a hundred dollars or uh, I don't know the equivalent of that in Bitcoin. You can get, you know, these fancy leather shoes. Um, you can have different types of these perks. So hundred, two hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Very similar to how Kickstarter and Indiegogo and all those platforms look like. And um, uh, people can obviously just uh, see everything on a nice and simple UI. Um, it it it's quite a it, the UI is quite a straightforward experience in my opinion for for users to just edit and just launch and i don't think there's been too many com, uh, issues around that like even during the the we are all not campaign which used the btc pay crowdfunding app um, we maybe got maybe one or two issues that we fixed straight away on on that campaign and other than that it was smooth sailing even for that huge amount of uh, donation volume yeah and i think just to add some context there it might be interesting to talk about the amount of saving that can come from using btc pay crowdfunding app whereas if you go through like these traditional uh, providers using standard fiat rails you might easily be paying two or three percent per donation and that can really add up so let's say ten thousand dollars that's now you know two hundred or three hundred dollars gone on fees yeah, and I think it actually is a lot more than two, three percent, because that's only for the for the transaction charge. Then they have administration fees on top, and it can easily go up to like twelve percent, if I remember correctly. So with BTC Pay, you save a lot of money, but that also applies to BTC Pay in general. Like just using BTC Pay over BitPay and all the other payment processors that uh, that are custodian based that. Um, take a little hold of your money for a bit of time they, they still charge you between what 0.5 percent to yeah i think i think i've seen it up to five percent sometimes so yeah, there's savings all around considering you can host btc pay for i think it's like four dollars a month at this point yeah that's an interesting one as well because i recall from my chat with pavlinex he was saying at the start it was something like 60 dollars a month to host it and then that cost dramatically came down why was that yeah so <laughs> that happened because initially the official way to install btc pay was through azure and azure is is quite expensive in every regard. So just hosting it there was always uh, always going to be expensive. So I think it was more than $60 though. I think it was more like $100 uh, at that point. Um, 
So once we got it down to once once the the installer got adapted to be more agnostic of where you're installing it, everything got down got reduced drastically in terms of cost. Uh, BTC Pay can be run on a Raspberry Pi with with without too many too many issues. So it's it's quite lightweight in itself. You just buy a thirty dollar device and you can host it in your own home. Uh, and what about trying to make BTC Pay Server work with some of the different, as I understand it, there are different web store plugins, right? So it's like WooCommerce and so on. Is there a lot of work that's required to keep it up to date with those or is that not a huge deal? It's, I don't think it's a huge deal, but the code base that we use for these plugins is uh, actually forked from BitPay since we actually emulated their, their whole API. Uh, their code base is uh, their code base is not uh, let's say the best and well the most well maintained. So we do get all sorts of issues with them every now and then. Um, but I do hope that once we get the new API going, we'll I'll be able to rewrite all of them to have a, to a cleaner code base. But yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> it it's not a big issue. Yeah, as I understand it right now, then it's there is some. I guess some element of backporting required as well for now while BTC Pay Server is still changing some of their bits and pieces on their end. Sorry, while BitPay are changing some of their things on their end. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, they don't change that much from their end. Um, it's they, they do have to keep some backwards compatibility because they have so many merchants that aren't really willing to change their plugins just for breaking support for you know old code so in terms of backwards compatibility it's not that big of an issue from from their their newer code base but for us we do add a lot of stuff <laughs> to btc pay and we have to make sure it stays fitting with the with the bitpay layer so it, that is a bit annoying to do but there's nothing we can do about it but we just have to stay careful and kind of handle our code base uh, with more care just to make sure that it stays fitting. Um, I do wish that eventually we'll, we can, uh, once we have the new API and everybody settles in with it, that we can make the BitPay compatibility layer an opt-in thing, but maybe down the line. Right, yeah. And do you have a sense, so I know obviously this is open source software, we don't know exactly who's using it, but do you have a sense of how many merchants are out there in the wild using BTC Pay Server? Just even a rough estimate? I would say a few thousand. I would. I can't really say much more than that, but I would say a few thousand. Um, I do know that some of the volume on some of these merchants is insanely crazy, like the statistics regarding like bit, uh, bitcoins being transacted on them is huge. Like I won't say numbers, but it's like ridiculous. So it is definitely making an impact. That's great to see. And in terms of BTC transmuter, do you know how many people are using that alpha version and what's their feedback been so far? Yeah. So I've mostly been working with, uh, with Mike from coin cards um, we're, we're using it you know, obviously in production with him since he loves to be reckless. <laughs> um, um, but it's been working great with him. I think so far we've only had a few issues and I've been pumping out bug fixes and versions every time he encounters something. So, yeah. Um, and I'm, we're not really advertising the plugin too much right now because we don't want people to have a bad experience from the start, but I think, you know, <laughs> I, I want to say a few months from now, it should be. Nice and smooth. Excellent. Uh, Look, I think that's just about it in terms of uh, kind of questions I had on my list. Did you have anything else you wanted to touch on? Um, Nothing that I can think of directly. Um, Yeah. Okay, great. Well, look, I think it's it's been fantastic chatting with you. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, context that hopefully any listener who is thinking about running, uh, you know, being a merchant and running BTC Pay themselves can use. Uh, and lastly, before we let you go, make sure you tell the listeners where they can find you online and if they want to chat with you, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me mostly on the um, on our Mattermost chat. So that's chat.btcpayserver.org and Mr. Cooks on Twitter. Fantastic. Well, look, that's been great. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. 
I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty cool just to get some insight into the way Cooks is thinking about these things and also the progress on some of these different features such as the BTC transmuter or the Fiat bridge. So I hope you guys are enjoying the series. We've got one more episode coming soon. And just a reminder, you can subscribe and get the show notes on my website, stefanlevera.com. Share the episodes with a friend, review or rate the podcast. If you want to advertise, you can email me, stefanlevera at pm.me. And similarly, if you've got any feedback, you can DM me on Twitter or email me. Thanks, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. 